Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Avocado Cafe. We're very happy that uh, you're participating today. And I think we have a very good program that should um, answer a lot of questions about pollination. So before we get going, I wanted to make sure that I said a thank you to the two sponsors that we have for the meeting, the Hofschi Foundation uh, for posting the videos and the PDFs of the talk and other supplementary uh, material on avocadosource.com and then to Data Harvest for hosting this meeting. I'm really happy to tell you that we, we established a YouTube channel in the last month and so you can go and actually look at the videos on the YouTube channel. So go into YouTube and just put Avocado Cafe. You'll get a couple things to select from. I think there's an Avocado Cafe restaurant in New Zealand that has a YouTube channel, different things, but you, you can easily find it. And then um, the videos are also being posted on Avocado Source. But the nice thing about Avocado Source also, in particular for this meeting, there's additional content. So you can, you can visit both of them. Um, we'll notify you again about the April meeting. The April meeting is going to be about plant nutrition and the program that David Crowley, who's a retired professor from UC Riverside, did on de decision support tools on how to fertilize. And that, that project was largely funded by a grant from the California Avocado Commission several years ago. So um, David is uh, very excited to share information both about plant nutrition and that program that you'll be able to, uh, I believe, subscribe to. So just a real quick question about the meeting mechanics, just to remind you, especially if you've not uh, uh, been to an avocado cafe meeting yet. Um, when it comes time to ask questions, you could do it in two ways. We, you can do it either via chat, which is a red circle. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, it, a, a, a toolbar will show up and you'll see chat. You can ask a question in chat and then um, I can um, ask the question. I'll, I'll make note of the question. And then when we get to the Q&A, um, I can ask that question for you. The other way is that when we get after the, all the talks, you can raise your hand. The way to raise your hand is then you see in the blue bar, there's a reaction. If you click on that, you have an option to raise your hand. And then I, as a moderator, will call upon you if you raise your hand. So there's two different ways to ask questions of the speakers. So today's topic to continue the theme of avocado productivity and ways that we can influence the productivity of the tree this meeting is about understanding pollination, pollinators and their importance for avocado fruit set. And we're very happy to have three uh, distinguished speakers today. We have two speakers from Israel, Arnon Dog and Rafi Stern. And then we have a speaker, Gordon Frankie from UC Berkeley, who has been working in Ventura County now for many years. And so they're all gonna talk about different aspects of pollinators. So uh, to get going, I'm gonna make a few introductory comments, really basically like, why do you need pollinators? And um, just as an introduction, the ultimate crop that we harvest is dependent upon a lot of factors, tree health, alternate bearing status, the ability of the tree to induce the development of flowers, then the conditions of flowering and fruit set, and then the conditions that are in the field um, after fruit, fruit set that allows the fruit to grow and, and be retained on the tree for harvest. But so even though there's all these factors, what we're focusing today is on conditions during flowering and fruit set. And there's many conditions during flowering and fruit set in this, this topic that influence yield. Pollination and fertilization, the timing of the female and male flowers, the activity of the actual pollinators, the presence or absence of pollinizers and environmental conditions, especially temperature. Again for, this, again, for this meeting, we're only gonna be focusing on pollinators and pollination. So there's a lot of other aspects 
to flowering and fruit set that we're not going to cover in this talk, but we're planning on having a, a subsequent meeting probably later this year in the fall about uh, these other aspects of flowering and fruit set. So today we're just going to focus on pollinators and the act of pollination. So with that, I just want to quickly review some pollination terms. So the two key ones you need to think about is pollination and what is the definition of pollination and that's the transfer of pollen from the anther, which is the male portion of the flower to the stigma, which is the female portion of the flower. Once the pollen lands on the stigma, the pollen grain will germinate and it grows down to the ovule. And the process of fertilization, which you need for fruit set, is the fusion of the male gamete, which comes from the pollen grain, with the female gamete, which is in the ovule, that forms the zygote. And the zygote eventually forms the seed. Okay, so you, you, there's two processes really to get fruit set, but we're gonna be focused again on the first one, which is pollination. The, now there's different kinds of pollination that uh, was defined uh, by Gadi Sham. So the pollination again, the transfer of the pollen to the sigma. Okay, and I'll update your mom, okay? So uh, if you could please uh, um, mute yourself, thank you. So cross-pollination is that the pollen that is just deposited on the stigma that comes from a different variety, such as moving a pollen grain from Zutano to the stigma of Hass. That would be cross-pollination. Close pollination and self-pollination, we would not be able to figure that out just by looking at the pollen grains on the stigma, but close pollination it's when the, the pollen is deposited on the stigma from another flower in the, uh, from the same tree or the variety. So that would be like if a, a, um, we have a half pollen grain that comes from a different flower on the tree or another half tree in the grove. Self-pollination in the purest sense of the word is when the pollen that's deposited on the stigma is actually coming from the same flower. Now that is not likely to cause fertilization in avocado flowers. And I'll explain that in, an, in uh, another slide. But the other, two term, the other three terms that are very important to deal with is what is the definition of a pollinator? And the pollinator is the agent which transfers the pollen from the male to the female floral organ. Okay, so we normally commercially use honeybees in avocados, but we're gonna hear from Rafi Stern about augmenting that with bumblebees. And we're gonna hear from Gordon Frankie about other things that could be effective pollinators of the avocado flower. So the pollinated tree is a tree that receives the pollen and the pollinizer is the variety that donates the pollen to another cultivar. So if we're dealing with Hass, then common Hass pollinizers would be Bacon, Zutano, Edinger, and Edronol. So there's, we, we typically think of the fact that we need a pollinizer and a pollinator for avocados because avocados have this phenomena called synchronous dichogamy, which means dichogamy means two houses and synchronous means that it's, uh, it's, synch it's synchronized in terms of how it flowers. So many flowers like an apple flower or a peach flower, um, roses, et cetera, they open when the flower opens, they have both functional male and female portions of the flower. But the avocado is different. The flower opens twice. When it opens the first time, it's in the female phase, which is on the left. And you can see that phase of flowering looks quite different from the male phase of flowering because once the female, the female phase is over, the flower closes, the pollen grains inside the anthers mature, and then the flower will open as male flower. And so this is a diagram of that. So when we get fertilization, we have the pollen grain landing on top of the stigma. The pollen grain grows down the style of the, 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 the female portion of the flower and causes 
um, fertilization in the alveole. Okay, the, it, you can see now in a cross section how different the flowers look in both the female and the male stage. And as a grower, it's very important if you're really interested in this to be able to go out and recognize these two different phases in your, in your avocado trees when the trees are flowering. There's many sub stages. I'm not gonna go over that today, but just recognize that the fact that there's two phases, there's synchronous. So you first have the female phase and then you have the male phase. So now avocados are a little bit more complicated. They have it. We have A flower types like Hass and B flower types like Zutano and Edinger and Bacon. And so in an A flower type, the, typically depending on the temperature of the, the, the night before, the flowers will open female in the morning, around noon or so, the flowers will close, the flowers will remain closed all afternoon, all morning, and the following afternoon, now the flower will open as male. The B flower types are different. They open female in the morning, and they close and the following morning, they're male. And so that allows for cross pollination where the pollen can be transferred from the male flower of the B variety to the female flower of the A variety in the morning and then the reverse in the afternoon. So there's many different ways that the pollen can reach the stigma of a female phase flower. And this slide is from a data from Gaudi Shah. So we have what, again, what I described as cross pollination, where the pollen can move from the B flower type to the A flower type. And in the afternoon from the A flower type to the B flower type. So that would be cross pollination. We have a close pollination, which where the pollen is transferred from either a, 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 a a flower um, on the same tree or in the same grove of the same variety. And that is when we talk about overlap. A lot of times, a lot of people will talk about, well, I have overlap of the flowering on my half. So that would be an example of close pollination when you have overlap between the flowers on the same tree. Then you have self pollination, which is really when the pollen lands on the stigma in the same flower. But because a lot of times, especially under dry, warm conditions, the stigma is no longer receptive or uh, the pollen grains can no longer germinate when they land on the flower during the male phase of the flower. So self-pollination, we don't believe occurs, especially in conditions like California, very often. It's a rare event. So the amount of time of a given day that allows for close pollination is very limited due to temperature. And so we'll be talking about that more when we uh, give the talk about floral biology. Gadi Sham and David Padamore and, um, and myself, we've all collected data that shows that the minimum temperature during the night before the flower opens influences how long you have in this overlap period that allows for close pollination. The potential for self-pollination is dependent upon many factors, but the main one would be the receptivity of the stigma. And we won't cover that any further probably today either. So finally, then the few comments I wanna make is do we need a vector to move the pollen to the stigma? whether it's cross-pollination or close-pollination. So I just want to cover a project we did both in Chile and in California. And the first one is a farm ACW pollination study that we did in 2010. And this was a collaboration between Mark Hoddle, myself, and Ruben Hofshi. And this project was funded by the California Avocado Commission and the Hofshi Foundation. And we basically had five treatments. We constructed those net houses you saw in the previous slide. And we had a net house where the bees were not allowed into the net house. And we only had the small insects that were present. And Mark Hoddle monitored what those insects were. We had a net house where all the 
where all the trees were sprayed with an insecticide to eliminate all insects. And again, Mark Hoddle monitored whether we had insects or not in, the, in those houses. Then we had a net house with honeybees. And this picture down on the lower left shows the hive and the bees could go in and out of, uh, so they were not restricted only into that net, uh, in the net house. We had the outside control. And then because uh, we were spraying trees with water inside the net houses, and Gary Bender had once suggested that wa uh, water was important in terms of enhancing um, fruit set and avocados, we had an outside water control. So we did that and then we collected the yield on the 12 trees per net house. And this is the data we saw. We saw virtually no fruit in the small insects or the insecticide net house. And there was no statistical difference when we compared the 12 trees in the net house, whether we had the net house with bees, the outside control or the water control. So we did a larger study where we had a replication in Chile the following year. And th this project was funded by the Hofstra Foundation and Jorge Schmidt, who was the owner of the, of the large orchard. And so you can see a, an example of these net houses now down in Chile. So in this case, we had four treatments, the same ones. We had five replications of each of these treatments and we had 12 trees per net house. And again, you can see what the yield data looks like. Virtually no fruit in the, the net houses with, were, with just small insects, which were mainly, uh, I can't remember which insects there were. I would have to go back and look. Or the one where we eliminated all insects in the, in the net house. And we had no difference between the net houses that had the honeybees or the outside control. So the conclusion on the net trials is that we demonstrated the need for some kind of vector for pollen dissemination. So probable pollinators for avocados are uh, insects such as honeybees, bumblebees, flies, hoverflies, and this all will be discussed further by our speakers.